Welcome to your practice. Take a nourishing posture, whatever that means for you. I like to sit on something to elevate my hips and get my lower back warmed up right from the get-go. Then you can take your thumbs and touch right on top of your ring fingers if that's comfortable for you. And if it's not, you can simply place the palms face up on the lap or you can take the stance. It's called with the hands prana mudra. Prana means the life force that's always moving within us. And so this helps nourish and activate our own life force. Rest the back of the hands on the thighs and turn towards your nourishing breath. Take a deep inhale and release a smooth exhale. Two more like that. Deep inhale. Smooth exhale. One more. Deep inhale. Smooth exhale. Feel the energy that's always moving within you. We magnified it with the flow of your breath. Prana. Always moving life force. And like a river, if we jump in its flow, then there becomes a current and there's less energy needed when we're in the flow, right, of the tides of the water. So bring your palms together at heart center. We'll sing one ohm, which is another way, like our breath, to access the current of our life's flow, the tide. Take a breath in, inhale. Oh. Now you can bend forward in your hips and bow your head to your heart. Take a deep inhale and a smooth exhale. And two more. Inhale and exhale. Increasing the velocity and the focus on the breath. And then when you're ready, you can inhale, lift your chin, and we'll start on our bellies. So if you'd like and care to take a towel or a blanket, you can place that in the center of your mat like so. And then stretch your body straight so that your hip points, they're called your ASIS, and to your superior iliac spine, has cushion. Then walk your hands alongside your chest. Now, if you have any lower back challenges, you can take a block if it's comfortable to do so, or a pillow. And you could squeeze that something between the adductors, the inner upper thigh muscles, or not. You could just activate them in your mind's eye. Then inhale with the hands alongside the chest. Take a moment. Make sure that the center of the wrists are lined up directly under your outer shoulder. Make sure your legs are firm and strong, hugging muscles onto bone. Then inhale, rise up and press the back of your head back. Pull your throat in and belly a little bit. And exhale, come on down. Again, strong legs, squeeze whatever between your legs if there's something. And inhale, rise up, throat back, belly back. And exhale. A little more quickly now. Inhale, rise up. Maybe start to squeeze and activate the triceps a little more. And if there's no pinching through the lower back, if there's spaciousness and graciousness, you can go a little higher. A little cobra pulses. Inhale, rising up from inside. Triceps in, shoulders back. Maybe gaze goes back or gaze can stay forward. Mm, waking up the body by infusing it with prana, that life force energy, always moving. Catch its flow. And there's the saying, inhale, rise up. Energy flows where attention goes. And so when we bring our attention, right, to our breath, that prana, that energy grows and gets bigger. One more round. See if you can claw the floor like a little lioness or lion and press through the finger pads. Now hold for a breath. 
Then exhale, you're gonna lift the hips up. You can start to walk the knees under onto the supported softness. You can readjust the prop if that's comfortable for you, or maybe you don't want that prop anymore. You can take it to the side. Come into a tabletop position. Then when you're ready, inhale, look forward, melt your chest. Exhale, curl your toes under and squeeze your knees in towards one another. Feel the thighs tone and then keep that. Inhale, look forward. These are called cat cows. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, notice the breath when the poses are simple, how you can really increase the nourishment of your breath. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, looking forward. And then exhale, pull it in. Hold here, toe in the belly and push the floor down and forward away from you. Good, nice work. Then when you're ready, inhale, you're gonna look forward. Squeeze the, th the proper block between your thighs and when you're ready, lift the belly. Don't let it drop even as the heart and gaze are forward. Good, two more. Exhale, push the floor away from you. This time we're holding. And when you're ready, looking forward, inhaling, hold here. Gently draw the belly in a little more so you're not collapsing totally through the lower back. Nice work. Then when you're ready, you're gonna gingerly walk your fingertips towards your knees and rise up. Now here, you're gonna take yourself, I'm gonna show you this way, with your knees a little bit wider. So take your knees to the outer hip distance. You can take your feet even a little wider out to the side. And then you're gonna do hip circles. So hands on your hips, lift your spine. And when you lift your spine, right, you create these windows in the diaphragm that can be opened up with air. And then make hip circles one way, and when air gets in, the prana flows, that life force energy. And when the life force energy flows, right, we have access to more life enhancing energy. Go the other way, keep circles, other direction now, big swooping circles. Maybe notice any tightness in the hips when you go one way compared to the other, and you can go that way a little bit more. As we finish it up, you can go back the way you started, or you can stay with this direction. Good, nice work. Now, inhale, when you're ready, you're gonna stretch your right arm up and overhead. Keep your left hand on your hip, pause. Squeeze your knees to center. Flow the hips back a little bit. And zip up on your navel and start to stretch. Deep inhale. Smooth exhale. Inhale, when you're ready, we'll go the other direction now. So stretch your left arm up. Hug your knees together. Flow the hips back. Zip up on your navel and stretch it over. Deep inhale. Smooth exhale. In and out the nose is how we're hoping the breath to flow. If you're not stuffy, you can have your lips together and your teeth apart and relaxed. Good, inhale, take your arms out to the side. Zip up on your navel, keep the hips flowing back so you feel the low back and back spine lift up as much as the front belly and front spine, right? We're trying to get for this even lift here. Good, and then exhale, you're gonna twist to the right Pull the right side of your belly back. Inhale, squeeze your knees. Rise up like you're literally willing prana energy through the air molecules into your fingertips. Flowing into the base of the heart and then you twist over the other direction to the left. Inhale, stretch up a little more quickly. Exhale, keep the back plate of the body. Inhale up. Lifting as much as the front plane of the body. Exhale, twist. Inhale up. 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 Exhale, twist. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, twist. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, twist. And inhale, come back to your cat cows. Curl the toes under. 
Make sure wrists are underneath shoulders. 10 finger pads press. Toes are curled under. Look forward. Enjoy your breath. Exhale. Relish in the flow of it. Inhale. Look forward. Exhale. Pull it in. Notice where your tension tends to meander. Inhale. Look forward. If it's in your body and you're feeling the sensations of now, look in, then stay with that. Inhale, look forward. If it tends to drift off into other aspects of your life, to-do lists, etc., then keep bringing it back to what does your body feel like. Last two rounds, exhale, look in. Look at the floor and the patterns beneath you. Inhale, look forward, look at what befalls your eyes in front of you. Good, now the next inhale, float the right leg out behind you. Flex the foot so you feel a charge in the back leg, hugging above the inner kneecap, and turn the right toes down a little bit and in until you feel a widening through the pelvis and the low back. Push the floor away from you to tone your belly. Now add that challenge, you can do it. And then you either stay here pressing through your 10 finger pads, or you can gently come high in your left fingertips, that's phase two, or you can extend the left arm straight, bicep along your ear. Keep rolling the left tricep down, lifted in the pit of the belly up, last two rounds of breath. And then exhale, place the left hand down to mirror the right once again. Then on an inhale, stretch and point the right toes, and exhale, take the toes now over to the left, you can press the top of the foot down, twist the belly to the left and stay here. Or you could go into the blade, that's the outside of the right foot. That gives a little more earth energy and stability. And you can let the gaze go over your left shoulder or the gaze can remain straight ahead. Each breath invite more prana, right? We have unlimited access to energy, but often we feel depleted we're running ourselves ragged. And we forget that we have these resources, such as our breath, to replenish us at any given moment. Inhale, when you're ready, stretch the right leg out behind you now. Bend the knee, open the hip. And then when you're ready, keep breathing and focus on lifting the inner right kneecap up and toning the left side of the belly till you feel the right knee, and particularly the outer right knee, move down. Last round of breath here. If you want to challenge, you can come high on your left fingertips. Simply tone the left side of the belly or arm out, knuckles down, knuckles into sacrum, roll the left shoulder back. Last challenge here. And exhale, stretch the right leg straight, release the left hand down, take the right knee down, take a few rounds of cat cows, inhaling, looking forward. Exhale, pulling it in. If you want to challenge yourself physically and it feels comfortable to do so, you could curl your toes under, lift your hips into down dog, and then inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, straighten your legs, look towards the navel. So this is another alternative to cacao. What I am inviting you to do is really dance with your breath. Dance with the inhalation, Dance with the exhalation. When we dance with our breath, our energy increases, our vitality grows, and good things happen all around. If you're in your down dog, come back to the knees, and then we'll take a round of three-legged tiger pose. Left leg extend and take a breath. Inhale, high on your right fingertips if you want the balance challenge. You could extend the right arm up, tricep rolls down, flex your left foot to keep that leg taut. I'm thinking about making this left leg strong, right? Zipping up on the inner kneecap, toning the back of the leg by pulling the heel forward, toning the front of the leg by drawing the toe now towards the shin. And then lift up on the right side of the belly. Stretch out through those right fingertips. Last breath. 
Maybe you can sense the prana running from your right middle fingertip towards the back of the left heel. One long line of energy through your spine. Then on an the exhale, right palm down, take a breath, point your left toes and press the top of the left foot down. With the top of the left foot pressing down, scissor the legs and you might start to look over the right shoulder. Or it could be that you curl the toes under with the legs straight and gaze can be between the thumbs or you can look towards that inner left foot. Deep inhale, smooth, present, exhale. The breath is filled with unlimited energy, unlimited peace, unlimited soothing. So it behooves you to breathe. Good, the next inhalation, extend your left leg straight now, point the toes and bend the knee, open the hip. Then when you're ready, Hug the inner left thigh in and to the sky. Point that inner thigh up. And then on an exhale, glide your tailbone down. Push the floor away from you. You might feel the outer left knee start to get a little weighty. And then tone the right side of the belly as you breathe. Maybe you feel a stretch in the front of the left hip. Hmm, I definitely do. Then inhale, stretch your left leg straight, point the toes, roll the hip down. Let's all take a down dog now together. So walk your knees back, curl your toes under and keep the knees bent. You want your feet outer hip width if you're really tight in the hamstrings or your lower back. If you're not as tight, you could play with sitting bone distance, the feet, but you do want the base of your tech second toes pointing forward. You shouldn't be able to see your inner or outer heels, they should be buried. And that tells me that your ankles are neutral in an optimal position to free the hips and emancipate the low back. With the knees bent, see if you can bend them a little bit more. Hug your knees in without knocking them. Press your inner thighs wide, pushing them isometrically apart. And then see if you can start to straighten your legs as you press your inner knees apart, rooting your outer heels to the floor. And then add that layer of the breath, that pranic breath flowing in and out the nose. Lips together, teeth relaxed. Nice work. Inhale, when you're ready, come forward to a high plank position. Now you can scoot your feet back if your shoulders are forward of your wrist. And then when you're ready, you can come to the knees or not but find your position so that your hip points are once again on the blanket. And then we're gonna take a juicy thigh stretch. So this is called half frog pose. You want your left forearm, I'll show you this way, parallel to the front edge of your sticky mat. With the palm down to the left, make sure this right shoulder, excuse me, left shoulder isn't rounding and rolling in, but claw the left hand like a paw and pull that left shoulder back. And then press both hip points into the floor. Make your legs strong and lift your right shoulder up and back. So you feel the shoulder blades hug to the base of the heart. Then bend your right knee. With the right knee bent, you can extend the arm, pull the shoulder back and grab the outside of the foot. You could take a strap here or a tea towel or any kind of really towel and point your toes and catch the foot as well. So like this, push down into your left forearm and grab the outside of the strap. Now, if you're here and the elbow is pointing to the sky and you're very flexible in the shoulder, even more challenging is to start to squeeze that right elbow in and point the right elbow forward. And this would be really deep through the shoulder and it might be too much. A lot of us, it's just too much. Kick the right foot up and back. Feel the stretch in the front of your quad, maybe the front of your hip, those hip flexors. And keep turning, turning, turning to the left. Good. Now here, start to take the foot on the inside. Roll that right shoulder to your ear and back one more time. 
And then it might be that you twist to the left and that's your maximum. Or it could be that you could actually flip your hand like you're high-fiving the wall behind you with the right hand and pull the right heel towards your outer right sit bone and stretch your thigh that way. You might be to wrap your fingers around the base of those toes and press the right toes down towards your outer right hip. Either variation, hug your right knee in and stretch your outer right knee back. Lift your chest. Good, nice work. Exhale, we'll do the other side now. So right forearm is down, claw the floor, and the forearm is parallel to the front edge. If you use the strap, take the strap to the left and have it handy and ready. And then when you're ready, come high on your left fingertips, make a little teepee, and we want to get the shoulders rolling up and back. So we feel the shoulder blades support the base of the heart. And then when you're ready, bend your left knee. Please don't let this right leg splay out, just like our cobra, the first one we did when we warmed up today. In practice, we kept the leg really strong and firm, right? Hugging the inner kneecap, keeping that leg really powerful. And then on an exhale, you can grab the outside of the foot, and if you can grab it, turn a little bit to the right, lift your chest. Or it might be use a strap to grab it. If you use a strap, it's always palm face up to keep the integrity of the shoulder happy. Shoulder to your ear and back, and then you can pull the foot in and kick the foot up. It's like kicking it away from you, but don't let that left knee splay out and the left foot go out to the side too much. It's directly behind you. Or the elbow could come forward. With the elbow forward, suck the shoulder back. And again, kicking the foot up and back. Last round of breath, smooth inhale, strong exhale. And then you can slowly, whatever you're doing, release the left foot for a moment. Then you're gonna pause. As you pause, square your hips and take the arm up again. Pull the shoulder back, see if you can grab the inside of the foot. Again, you could take a strap and do the same thing as we did last time. Or if you can get to the foot, twist your whole torso and gaze to the right. Right leg remains straight and strong. It might be you can point the elbow on the left to the sky, keep the arm bone drawing back, and pull the foot towards your outer left hip. Or you can start to wrap the hands right at the base of your toes, and then the fingertips wrap around them, touching the arch of the foot as you pull the foot in to the base of the iliac crest, the whole right hip, essentially. When you're ready, you can release. Bring your hands back to Cobra. This is where we started. Take a block or a prop between your thighs, or not, if you choose not to. Increasing the pranic energy, the flow of life force energy. See how you feel now. Strong legs. Add the refinement of hugging your ankles in, squeezing the prop between your legs if you have one, or simply squeezing your inner thighs together. Roll the shoulders up and back. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale up. Shoulders up and back. Throw back. Maybe head back and exhale. Flow like this a few more times in the current of the breath. Inhale, ankles in, strong legs, and belly and throw back. And exhale, dissolve down. And inhale, rise up from inside. Feel how good it is to move and breathe. And exhale. Nice work. Inhale when you're ready. Press up to all fours. We're going to come onto our backs for bridge pose. Take a moment and we're going to have a blanket if you feel like you want that blanket underneath your hips or towel. Some of you won't want that and that's fine too. You're going to go on your back for Satubanda and again, you can work with a prop today or not. Black between thighs or not. Organic pillow will do. You want your feet outer hip distance and the tendency is they tend to splay out. They tend to go like this, like a duck. So make sure that the base of the second toes are really parallel. If I look right and left, I can't see my pinky toes, and that's a great way to test it out. And then take the shoulders to the earth while you lift your spine 
and press your hips into the floor along with your palms. As you push down into the floor, squeeze whatever's between your legs, if anything, or simply the inner thigh muscles together. And then pressing your head back, lift your hips. Take a deep inhale from your knees, up through your hips, through the sides of the body. Let the spine and breath grow. And come on down. Inhale, rise up. Press your head back to feel the back of the neck lift and release down. Two more, rise up, arm bones back, head back, and come down. One more, lift up and come down. Good, now we'll try the same thing and we'll add the arms. So see if it's too much for you. If the arms feel too much, you can keep them alongside the body. We're going to inhale, lengthen the sides of the body and think, I'm lifting on the front body as much as the back body. So when you squeeze your thighs together or prop, you'll feel right away your capacity to lift the back, low back is really enhanced. Same thing, lift up in the front body, maybe even press the rib cage down to do so and lift your hips, extend your arms. Keep the sense of lifting the low body up as much as the back body, up, front and back bodies, and re release the hips down. Good, a few more like that. Inhale, press your head back, press your knuckles, extend the arms overhead. Exhale, tap the hands to the thighs, squeeze your thighs in to the prop or towards one another. Inhale, rise up, exhale down. Start to flow at your own pace, or you can follow me. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Last one, inhale up, exhale down. Good, now here, you're gonna take the prop to the side and when you're ready, we're gonna take Sukri Randrasana's pose. So that's called thread the needle. If on your back it ends up being too much, I'll show you an option to do upright on your forearms. So bend your right knee, open the right knee from the hip like a figure four and flare the right toes. Then lift your left foot off the floor. You've got a triangle here you've made with your legs. You could hold with your right head, the back of the right knee and hug the left knee. So you're supporting both knees with the left hand and stay here. If you want more, take your right hand through the triangle you made with your legs, interlace the fingers at the center of your left thigh. Or you can interlace the fingers at the front of your left shin. Deep inhale, press your hips to the floor and shoulders to the floor. Smooth exhale. Feel that which is touching the floor and breathe into it. If all this is too much and you can't quite get your hip, you could try coming onto your forearms and just point your right knee towards your nose and you'll probably be able to catch something like this, even if the knee is more medial, internal. As you're here, lift the back, tone your belly. Good, the next exhalation, Interlace your fingers at the center of behind the left thigh if you're on your back here. And you can stretch by pressing your hips down and pulling this leg in. Keep the left toes pulled, drawing downward towards the floor and the right toes flared. If you're here, then you can literally just, instead of being like this with the foot flat, you can start to stretch the left leg straight just press the belly and the hips towards the floor. If the knee bothers you at all, keep the knee pointing straight up. Keep the left toes flexing. Okay, then let's switch it out. So extend your right leg, bend the knee. Find the figure four by bending your left knee first. And then hugging the left glute in to find that figure four position on your back, supine or here on your forearms. Again, if you're on your forms, knee in is more moderate and less intense on the hip and the knee. Flare the toes on both sets of feet. And if you've got the figure four, take your left hand, 
place it in the triangle you made with your legs, and then interlace the fingers the exotic way. So we always go one way, make the opposite pinky below, yeah, and hug the back of the thigh or the front of the shim. Keep pressing the hips down to the floor, and rooting the shoulders to the floor. All about the prana, just growing your life force, energy, and capacities. Simply turning the attention to the breath. It sounds like it's a hard thing, like grow your energy, right? And actually when we relax and open to our breath, soften to the natural flow of it, the energy increases very naturally. Stretch your right leg straight, interlace the fingers behind the thigh if it's not already, and draw the toenails down. Right toenails, it's called dorsiflexion to the shin. And if you're here, on your forearms, then you dig your heel into the floor, yeah? Heel into the floor, draw it back. Deep inhale, smooth exhale. Good. Now, wherever you are, rise up to your seat. Flex your feet, make them outer hip distance. You've got some girth here and width, and that'll allow the lifting up of the pelvis. And then come high on your fingertips and take the knees to the left, and then to the right on an exhale, and then to the left, and then right. And you can go back and forth, exhaling as you point the knees. Two different directions. WD fording those hips. When the hips are unleashed and released, right, there's more flow of that life force energy. When the body gets stuck, then there's less flow. Extend your body now into Shavasana along the mat or wherever you're practicing, or you can rise up to a seat as you wish. We'll stay here for a moment or two of mindfulness. And if you're inclined to do so, you can take your thumbs back to prana mudra. Mudra simply means seal or position of the hands. Pressing the thumbs on top of the ring fingers. Turn to the flow of your breath now. And let the breath escort you deeper and deeper into the caverns of yourself. Just like there's a water table beneath the earth we know that if we dig deep enough, we access unlimited water. Knowing, too, if we excavate deeply enough with the tool of our breath, we access this unlimited flow of energy, of life force within. So continue to deepen your breath and allow the breath to be buoyant and bright, broad and ebullient. And the only thing to do is focus on the breath you're in and then the next breath and then the next breath as you rest. When you're ready, you can move your fingertips and toe tips a little bit. Stretch your body in any way that feels good and right to you. You can Switch the cross of your shins if you're seated. And if you're on your back, you can roll to the right. Take a pause to keep the breath, the focus, and take a deep inhale and deep exhale. Then you can make your way back to your seat. Once again, take your thumbs on top of your ring fingers or simply rest the backs of the hands on the lap.
Take a deep inhale and a present exhale. Feel how the breath is more free, liberated, something you can fill in that blank, but different from when you started. We'll sing the sound of our life force energy as we give it out into the world and as we pull it in from nature and the world in all the nourishing ways. So we'll sing Om and feel yourself simultaneously offering out life force and pulling in life force. Inhale. Om. Seal the palms. Bow into yourself knowing you have this reservoir of life force energy that's living within you. May you access it whenever you need it. And it's never further than a breath away. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.